for? But you have in the past. So when you make line of changes, what are some of the considerations that go into, into it besides the obvious? Uh, what's the obvious? <laughs> the obvious, you know, maybe this guy has been giving you more than, than, than the player he's replacing. Um, you know, the numbers are better. But yeah. I, I'm just wondering, you know, you have to deal with egos, feelings, with, with oh, no, uh, no, no, the, no, the after no. effects. No, no, you never have to worry about um, egos and feelings. Um, you just, <clears throat> not well, not with our team. I mean, our guys are all understanding that uh, you just you know you go with whatever the best lineup is, and uh, our top to bottom, our team is professional and um, supportive of one another. So it's always just, are we going to be better off um, matchup wise? Are we going to be better off uh, with a certain rotation um, that you know allows one guy to guard somebody specifically on the other team? Um, it's just, you know, we watch the film and we, we make that decision. What's the risk of combinations that maybe you haven't practiced or, or played before and now you're thrusting them uh, in the middle? I don't know that we have a whole lot of combinations that haven't played together before. Um, you know, this team's been together for a few years and, um, and we've had plenty of experience the last couple of years in the playoffs. So um, I don't think that's really a factor. We, we have a lot of guys who can play. Uh, we've played literally every single guy on our roster um, other than Looney who's been injured the whole time But you look at the playoffs. We've played McAdoo. We've played Ian Clark. We have played Brandon Rush um, So we're not afraid to play anybody and we're uh, we're always going to be looking for the best combinations um, In every series and from game to game in the center Paul uh, one for Los sports China hello coach the uh, Steph was caught in foul trouble early, several games in his finals. Uh, do you know why he was so ag aggressive on defensive end? Was he trying to um, force or prove something? Well, I thought in game two he committed silly fouls by reaching. Uh, I didn't think that was the case last night. He got uh, he got called for um, a couple tough ones, um, but that happens. Um, and uh, he's just got to be able to play through that. And... Um, you know, it was. Um, it happens. It's, it's one of those things. But um, you know, he, uh, he he'll play better. He'll he'll. I'm sure he'll avoid foul trouble. He he normally does. And like I said, he wasn't reaching last night. He was more just um, you know, kind of a kind of tough breaks. But um, I'm not worried about that. Third row on the left. Steve uh, Michael Grange from Sportsnet. In your playing career, you saw the kind of scrutiny Jordan was under. Yeah. Play good, play bad. You had to deal with it. LeBron certainly dealt with it. Steph is kind of maybe, I don't know, for the first time, but he's certainly getting his share of scrutiny yeah. at this point. Any any advice for him? Do you pat him on the knee? What do you do? I really don't even need to give him advice. Um, one of the great things with Steph is he's so grounded. He understands um, how this process works. If, if you are in the limelight and you're the one um, doing the commercials and getting trophies, then you're also in the crosshairs. It's the way it works. Um, and it's it's not like he's out there, you know, celebrating and enjoying all the all the hoopla and and the accolades, and then going home to his room and you know, reading stuff and outraged, like, oh my God, how can they say that about me? That's not Steph. Steph gets it. He understands. So this is all part of it. We're on the biggest stage, and he's had a t couple tough games, so the criticism criticism will come, and um, he'll handle it f fine. That's what he does. Again, same side. Um, in the past, uh, Ty Lue has talked about reacting to what the other team does, not just your series, but throughout these playoffs. My question to you is, how is it determined, I mean, who, who takes that first step to, uh, would you have to react to them or do they react to you? Who, does, who makes that initial move that the other coach has to react to? Well, every series is, is different and, um, Sometimes a team will be preemptive and make a move f right from the beginning. Usually, I would say what happens is teams adjust um, after struggles um, because you you know if you get to the to the playoffs, you get deep in the playoffs. Generally speaking, you've played uh, kind of a similar rotation, a similar style all year. You make an adjustment before game one. The team's kind of looking at you like, "What are we doing? Like we're pretty good." 
So usually uh, both teams, I, I would say in my experience, kind of wait um, at least a couple of games before they make any dramatic move. And then it sort of goes back and forth from there. Tim, I'm here. All right. Tim Reynolds with the Associated Press. I preface this, Steve, by saying this is in no way a, a, a leading officiating question at all. But are you noticing maybe the Cavs being a little more grabby, a little more handsy with Steph than, than maybe – in, maybe maybe the way he was defended in the regular season. Yeah, I mean everybody knows the the um, the game is officiated differently in the playoffs. It has to be. Um, if you called the game the same way now as you did in the regular season, there'd be 50 fouls on both sides, and uh, you, you, the game would never happen. I thought last night was a really well officiated game. I think the whole finals have been really well officiated. Um, but it's going to be more physical. There's going to be more holding and grabbing on both sides. And uh, you have to be able to play through that. And as a, how did you assess ball movement last night? And is there, obviously it benefits everybody, but is there a better, is there a bigger beneficiary of it when the ball's popping as it has so many times this year with you guys then, Steph? Is there a bigger beneficiary? Of when, when, the, when the ball's moving the way you guys can move the ball. Uh-huh. Is, it helps everybody, but is there a bigger beneficiary than oh, Steph? Um, it just helps us. I mean, every game, like I said, is is different. And um, I didn't think the ball movement was bad last night. I thought they were the aggressor. Uh, they attacked us. I thought the biggest problem was our turnovers. Um, I think we had 18 that turned into or 19 that turned into 34, 36 points, something like that. So it seemed like every time we turned it over, they scored. And... Um, so the best way to help our defense is with our offense and being tougher with the ball and playing with more of a purpose and understanding that, you know, we got a, we got a team that's on their home floor, a great team that uh, is coming after us, as they should. I would expect nothing less. And um, we didn't match that force last night. Um, and that, that showed in, in our ball handling and rebounding. Back right. Hi, Steve. Uh, Chris Herring from the Wall Street Journal, right oh, behind I'm the person sorry. who just okay. asked the last question. Hi. Um, you guys won 73 games, obviously. You probably aren't looking to have to make too many adjustments when you have a season like that. But generally speaking, with, with the lineups you've used with Draymond at center, it seems like more often than not, th those lineups come in when you guys have struggled, and it's kind of almost like a break in case of emergency sort of thing. Um, but when you look at those sorts of alignments, are, are there kind of limitations as to how much you can play that just to not burn guys out by playing them up a position? How much does it take out of someone to have to play them um, a position bigger than what they usually would? Ryan, play? yeah, well, it's, um, you know, we like to play a lot of people. Um, all year we've played um, 10, 11 guys a night. And um, so we, <coughs> we don't like to cut our rotation way down and play five guys 40 minutes. Um, it's just not really who we are. And when we, when we do go smaller, we generally do it in short bursts um, to change the pace up and change, uh, change the look. Um, and that, that can vary from game to game, from series to series. But, um, you, know, it's, you know, it's not easy to, to play small for, for huge chunks of, of the game. On the left side, Mark, Jeff, and Ron, last three. Steve, given how they're defending Steph and given the nature of the officiating in the playoffs, is there anything that you can or need to do to kind of get him free and to put his stamp on this series once and for all? Yeah, we can definitely help Steph out, and we will. Uh, we can put, put him in better position to catch the ball or to handle the ball and to come off screens and that kind of stuff um, with more space. And we'll do that uh, tomorrow. And, and then the other side of it is just, you know, him playing better. And that's, uh, that's what the, the playoffs are about. You know, the coaching staff has to figure out the best lineups and the best, uh, best looks. Players have to perform. And um, it's on all of us to, to be better. When you see him have a couple of tough games in a short stretch like this, so unusual, uh -huh. what do you see in him as far as his reaction to his own play and his determination? Well, just think about the OKC series, you know. Um, down 3-1, he, he hadn't played well. Look what he did the last few games. So that's Steph. That's who he is. He always responds. He's um, got a huge heart, um, competitive as hell. Um, and um, extremely talented, and um, 
I, I know how he will respond. He'll, he'll play well. He always does. Jeff on the left, standing. Steve, Jeff Zilg at USA Today. You're no stranger to making lineup changes, rotation changes, more minutes for one guy, less for another. What, what are the factors that go into those decisions for you to, one, make sure that you, you still have the locker room that, you know, the, or that someone's not so disappointed that it's creating a problem inside the locker room? Well, they're all big boys. You know, they get paid a lot of money not only to play, but sometimes to sit. You know, you, you have to accept whatever comes your way as a player, especially in the playoffs when everything um, is more uh, easily changed, you know, because of matchups or lineups or whatever. So that doesn't concern me. We've done that. Um, we have a very mature group. And, um, you know, if we were to make any changes, I, I wouldn't worry about hurting any feelings. Ron, last one on the left. Steve, um, you've obviously fielded some questions about Steph, but Clay has also played below his standard. Um, are they are the Cavs defending him in a similar way to Steph? And do you see any frustration? I mean, he made some pretty strong comments last night about Mozgov's screen right. being kind of dirty, and it looked on replay like a pretty fair, hard screen. Um, what do you see sort of in Clay, and what needs to get him going? Well, first of all, um, none of this was an issue when we were up 2-0. You know, um, neither one of them had huge games when we were up 2-0, but it didn't matter because we won. So you know, now all of a sudden we lose a game and. You know, these become huge issues. This is what the playoffs are all about, you know, the, the spotlight and the speculation and the criticism and, uh, you know, the dramatic uh, change in perception about what's happening. You know, before, you know, I don't know, when did last night end? 11.30, so, you know, 14 hours ago, you know, 16 hours ago, everything was great. You know, we were doing great, and boy, what are the Cavs going to do? Or are they going to get swept and, you know, they're a great team. They win a game. Now all of a sudden it's our lineup changes and oh my God, Steph Curry can't play well and what's Clay going to do? This is when you go through the playoffs, you understand that this is all part of it. And as a player, you have to feel that. You know, our guys felt it last year. Steph had a couple of rough patches in the playoffs. We've made some lineup changes. Um, Clay didn't maybe have his best series in the finals last year. Who cares? You know, it's a team game. We get out there, we compete. Different guys step up and have big games. Other guys may not shoot the ball as well, but we all compete and we all play our asses off. And whatever happens, happens. But all this stuff about, oh my God, you know, what are we gonna do? We, all we have to do is take stock. We're up 2-1, we're in pretty good shape. We haven't played that well, let's play better. Thank you. Thanks, Coach.